Is your hair done? Are you ready? Are you recording already? <laughs> Who are you and what do you do? My name is... Do I, sorry, can we start this again? Sorry, this is going to take a long time. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another episode of The Teacher Pod. First of all, let's go straight in with it. Who are you and what do you do? Um, my name is Lucy Ellis, or the students know me as Miss Ellis. Um, I'm a PE teacher at Job Academy. And that is all. Uh, tell us about your background then, Miss Ellis. Where did you grow up? Where are you from? Um, yeah, just about, a bit about your background. Okay, um, it's, it's not that interesting really. I grew up in Essex, lived there all my life, um, went to a school in Essex and didn't move house, just stayed in the same place the whole time and that was all. What, what about you at school then? What kind of a student were you? Oh, I was a really good student. I was, um, I was on top of all of my studies, teacher's pair, um, did all my homework on time. I loved it. I loved the, I loved being at school, learning. I had a good group of friends, so it was just fun. Um, obviously, I was really sporty, played in all the sports teams, and liked getting out of lesson early so we could go to play our fixtures. And yeah, that was that was it at school. Any uh, any troubles? Did you ever get any any trouble? I did get in trouble once. I had one um, incident report written about me and it was because I was a prefect, so I was allowed to go out of school at lunchtimes. And I went out of school and I brought some chips back into school and you weren't allowed to bring food back into school that you'd gotten outside. So I got in trouble for that. Uh, but that was the one time. I never had detention. Um, How did yeah, that one time make you it. feel? Just that one incident, you straw. <laughs> Um, I think I, I think at the time I was actually like a little bit proud of it. I thought, oh my goodness, I've been I've been called into someone's office. I've got in trouble, <laughs> um, but yeah, I brushed it off, got over it. Um, yeah. What about um, a job you had before coming into education? Did you have anything uh, before being a teacher? Yeah, so I did when I was at school, um, just sort of finishing up school. Really, I worked at hairdressers. My sister worked at the hairdressers as well. Um, so I did like a bit of, you know, washing people's hair, washing up the pots, mixing up the colour, that sort of thing. And then while I was there, I learned to do um, like lots of things as well. So if it was a bit quiet, we would get a block out and start um, practising some stuff. And then at sick form, I actually did a bit of hairdressing as one of my courses. Um, but then I realised there was no money in it and started doing... Uh, being a lifeguard so I did my lifeguarding course and then I was a lifeguard all the way through university until I started my teacher training. So then in that case moves us perfectly onto the next question why why did you become a teacher why did you get into education? Well it wasn't it wasn't always the plan I did sport and exercise science when I was at uni I really enjoyed all of the health side of things and um, I learned a lot about obesity, childhood obesity, um, and then I started, you could pick some modules toward in, in your second and then a lot more in your third, and I started picking some more uh, education model, modules and realised they was actually quite fun and interesting, and then it sort of all tied together. I'd done lots of stuff with childhood obesity and health, and then I'd done... Um, I started to look at disengagement in teenage girls actually and thought the PE modules were quite interesting so it sort of just ended up going down that route and then when I did um I broke up for one of my university terms and had an opportunity to do a bit of cover work cover cover teacher uh, just before the school holidays started so it was about three or four weeks in a school and just really enjoyed the environment like being around the kids and yeah then applied for my teacher training so what does an outstanding student look like to you an outstanding student would be 
someone who arrives ready to learn and is in the right mood, mind frame. Um, they sit down, they get all of their equipment out, um, they engage in lots of discussion and questions. They don't just sit there and listen, they ask questions, they're inquisitive, and then perhaps at the end of the lesson, if there's anything they've thought of extra or anything they want to do, um, they, they perhaps ask and say, you know, where can I find out more about this? Or um, they go above and beyond when they're completing their homework. So do a bit of wider research and um, everything's obviously always handy on time. <laughs> that makes a good student. And yeah, just they're, they're just interested and or try to be interested in the subject, get themselves stuck in. So you don't want a lot then? Um, <laughs> I've got very high standards, very high standards. <laughs> What about outside? Is that of supposed to be a three word answer. <laughs> no, not really. It could be anything. What about outside? What do you like to get up to at, at weekends? Um, well, I like to. At the moment, I'm doing a lot of walking, so going to a walk to Tower Bridge or just somewhere different. Um, I like to go on runs or go to the gym um, and and keep active and busy. I also like going to see my friends. Um, I love going out for dinner. And reading, I actually read quite a lot as well. I read quite a lot um, in the evenings, but usually getting a big stint on like a Saturday afternoon or something, I can get stuck into a book. <laughs> Depending on the weather. If it's nice and sunny, I'll go out. Who inspires you and why? Oh, that's a difficult one. Um, I would probably say uh, lots of people for lots of different reasons, actually. Um, I won't go into all of them. I'll start off with my mum because she is extremely hardworking. She, um, she didn't really get into a career from an early age. She sort of just had jobs to just sort of keep her going. And then... Um, when we sort of grew up, she threw herself into her career and just progressed really quickly. Um, and it just, it sort of showed me and inspired me that um, hard work, from a working point of view, hard work can, if you really put in, then we get what you put in basically. Um, but also she's just really caring and generous and will do anything for anyone. And I think she makes me want to be like a nicer person. <laughs> um, so there's, there's her. And I suppose looking at, um, you know, the world of sport, I would probably go with Jessica Ennis. I think she's sort of smashed it in the world of sports and, um, and then went, what she's gone on to do since and having a family and everything else. Um, I sort of would look up to her a bit as, as well. And look, she's got lots of qualities that I sort of would inspire me. What's your favourite thing about Chobham Academy? Um, <laughs> well, all the people I work with, they, are, they just make the day nice. And the students make the day nice as well. When you come in and they're all so friendly and chatty and, um, you know, interested in having conversations and things. So I think it's the people. I think the people make it. Um, what it is and it's just a friendly nice place to be and if you could go back to a 15 year old uh, Miss Ellis that was only a couple of years ago uh, but if you could go back to a 15 year old Miss Ellis what <laughs> advice would you give them and why well I, I think I need to go back a few years before that actually I think I'd go to probably age 11 or 11 when I started secondary school um, and realise the importance of languages and being attentive and hardworking in languages lessons uh, because learning a language at my age now is much, 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 much harder and more expensive than <laughs> learning it when you're at school. So I'd say pay attention in languages, put in loads more extra effort um, so then you don't have to do it later on. 
thank you very much. Would you like to sign us out in Spanish? Because I know you've been learning it. Would you like to say thank you very much, <laughs> Mr. Avery, and goodbye, I'll see you soon? Something like that? Yes. <laughs> oh, that, that, that's English. <laughs> <laughs> um, gracias, Mr. Avery. I'm still working on my accent. Um, gracias, Mr. Avery. Adios. Hasta luego. Ciao. Hey, guy. Thank you. Adios. See you soon. Bye. <laughs> Thanks. Bye.